Daily Graphic, Agenda 111 Hospital Project takes off. Trede, Community First Beneficiary, Special Anti-Robbery Squad for Eastern Bono and uh, Bono East Regions. Also, Kissing Priest asks to step aside. And I say I like the swiftness with which the Anglican Church acted on this yesterday. Work on Sekedita Kradi uh, interchange begins. And can Angela Ofreata build flats for doctors? What does the Ghanaian Times say? It says, government rolls out Agenda 111 initiative as President cuts sought for construction of 111 hospitals nationwide. Also, bust overruns budget by 30 million. 444,551 due to unplanned activities in 2019. That's according to the Auditor General's reports. Shocking. President, uh, Presby Church takes stand against LGBTQI+, vows to sever relationship with churches, groups that allow gay practices. And Anglican priest Lance in hot water over holy kissing. And Ghana's quest for world-class Tibet hub taking shape, Dr. Che Samwa. The BNFT. <coughs> Huge gap between Bank of Ghana's rate and lending rate baffling. Senior advisor to the president. 330 million U.S. dollars. Bankra port enclave lands under siege by encroachers. Nuclear power would accelerate the African continental free trade area prospect, according to the MPG executive director. Government begins 2022 budget preparation focuses on revitalizing and transforming the economy. Targets total revenue and grants at 89.1 billion Ghana cities for 2022. And total expenditure is projected for 128.3 billion Ghana cities. Overall budget deficit is projected at 7.9%. Daily Guide. GNPC Auditor General clash over report. Uh, opposition not for fighting bagging. And kissing Anglican priest fired. That's uh, rev venerable, I'm told. Uh, venerable Balthazar Obin Labi is his name. And he's been asked to step aside. Agenda 111 takes off for health jobs. And also Republic Press. Sexy priest in trouble for kissing Anglican girls. Roads destroyed by floods will be giving emergency attention, according to Minister. An LGBTQ a uh, plus bill will endanger lives. Amnesty International scored for broader consultation. While well, we wait for the second reading, and I'm sure Amnesty International can put it in writing and send uh, a memorandum to Parliament. Dom Level will be killed if he decides to audit the Catholic Church, according to a priest. 16.88 million uh, dollar agenda. One 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 project takes off in Ashanti region. Mahama bounces back with a thank you tour. The Find that newspaper is the last one. Anglican priest who kissed students relieved of his duties. Street lighting is critical to reducing road accidents and crimes at night, according to the National Road Safety Authority. Ekufuado's 111 new hospitals takes off. It's the biggest health infrastructure drive in Ghana. And NAFCO only dealing with registered suppliers since 2018, <coughs> according to the CEO. My guest this morning, Richard Asante Eboa, he is the um, government spokesperson on infrastructure. And also lawyer Eduji Godwin Tanaklo. He is a member of the NDC's communication and legal team. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Okay. So this morning, Labour has served notice that they were going to hit the streets. Um, I, I, I show, the, show the footage one more time. I sat some 20 minutes to six when I was out there. Um, this was what Labour had come out, you know, to, to demonstrate. Nobody was there, but I saw five uh, policemen there wearing their masks. We try and connect with the convener and ask them why they told us that the thing will start at five, but as of 20 minutes to six, when I went there to check, this was it. Richard, your thoughts? Uh, They're asking for 4%, uh, more than 4%, and they are not there. <laughs> good morning, my brother, and good morning to my brother. I think it been some time now. I do believe that uh, in uh, participatory democracy is within the right of every Tom, Dick, and Henry within mm. the confines of this country who thinks that there are issues that he wants to either demonstrate to applaud or appreciate what is being done by a government or any institution or any group of uh, 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 individuals or to go on demonstration to draw attention of official dom to certain uh, issues that ought to be dealt with mm. by the state. It is within the right of everybody. And as such, if somebody wants to go on demonstration, for whatever reasons it is, we'd want to 
say that, I mean, it's within the laws for such people, so long as they, draw, they give the uh, relevant notice to the police and the various security agencies to make sure they provide them the, the relevant uh, security to shepherd them mm -hmm. in, 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 in their movement and also in their dealings. Mm -hmm. uh, as we speak, I think you said and we also heard that there were some people would want to embark on demonstration. Right. And, and their, their, their cry is that they do believe that they think that the negotiation that mm -hmm. was uh, held between government and the leadership of uh, the trade union you know, congress and other uh, worker organizations, they are not excited about it. They think that they would love, love to have more in, mm -hmm. in, in that regard. But you see that uh, we are not in normal times, and I think government has indicated this clearly to uh, our brothers and sisters who are working for government in various fields. Mm -hmm. And what has been the uh, uh, government communication over the period is that, I mean, looking at what we have as in the national kitty, I tell you, in the period of the COVID, particularly during the period of shutdown in 2020, the, the sort of challenge that the economy has to go through. Mm -hmm. At CTA, and I, I will be glad to let you know that in terms of the Ghana economy, mm -hmm. the total tax revenue that we reap in as a country, about 88% of it comes from a, a, a greater Accra. Mm -hmm. Then we have about six coming from the uh, Eastern region, which is the second. Uh, and then the Ashanti region follows up, and the remaining follows up. Mm -hmm. So it tells you that everything that makes Ghana most, a chunk of it revolves around Accra in terms of tax revenues. So when you have a country in distress because of COVID, and this is not something that was peculiar to Ghana, we have a good number of countries across the world mm -hmm. that went through this. A lot of economies <laughs> were in recession, but Ghana were able to go through this process in this period, mm -hmm. government will find means of uh, shouldering or providing some level of comfort for everybody within this country, including workers. We have free water being given to assist electricity, free electricity being given to assist mm -hmm. even certain uh, uh, workers, were, particularly were they, within the health. Were they free? Uh, government paid for it. I'm not sure nobody I'm anybody sure that paid for it. I'm sure people are paying for it because you were specific. Uh, no, I mean, he to told you it. that he was he's misquoted in, in, in that particular conversation. In a video he, he never he said that we are going to pay for it later on. He said that whatever is being paid for uh, by government, in, as, in actual fact, what you need to understand as a population is that it is the state's money that is being used to pay. So for we all pay for whatever. Uh, so uh, it is not. For free. instance, when we talk about when you talk about free education, mm -hmm. we know that parents are not paying school fees. They are not paying uh, boarding fees, they are not paying food feeding, they are not paying for examination fees and all those things. But <laughs> the overall understanding is that it is the government. If government is paying okay. for all these things, it means <laughs> that it is ma the money that belongs to me and you, okay. including I, tax I, revenue. I, I pray that you hold on a bit for me. <clears throat> let's, let's connect with Mr. Norbert Bobochi. He is one of the leaders of the Labour Front who had uh, planned to hold the demonstration this morning against what they call a 4% increment. Uh, that they are not satisfied with. Norbert, good morning. Thank you very much for your time. How are you doing? Your voice is very faint. I can hardly hear you due to the noisy. Sorry, Norbert, good morning. Can you hear me? How are you? Hello? Hello, Norbert. Good morning. How are you, Mr. Bobochi? Uh, I can hardly hear you, please. Uh, it, now, where are you now, presently? Uh, we are at the police station of seat of that spot. Okay. That is where we are gathering now. We were just informed this morning that we couldn't gather at our brand spot due to one or two reasons. Those reasons haven't been explained to us, but we think that that will not hinder the progress of what we want to do this morning. Who informed you that you cannot gather in front of your brand spot as agreed with the police? Who informed you that you cannot gather at the Obra spot because you agreed with the police yesterday? Security officer that is uh, manning the place. And he is saying that until we, we, we have a, a notification from the BNI or the district assembly, or he has orders from them, uh, we cannot gather there. I see. So this flies in, in contrary to the agreement you had with the police yesterday because we also read the statement from the police signed by DSP Julian Obing stating that you start from the brass port, go through Farisco. That place is a place of public safety. Yes. That place is a place of public safety. 
one we can look at any point in time. Mm. And we need no permission from anybody. But we are surprised we've been told this morning that that is the procedure. I see. And by the way he was speaking to us, he was trying to tell us that it should, an arrangement should have been done uh, uh, about a week or two ago. Mm. As of 20 minutes to 6, when I came there uh, to the Obra spot, I saw five police women. But I didn't see anybody wearing a red outfit suggesting that some of your members were out there. What's your response? Oh, I am here. Members are here. And the fact is that this is not any other group but workers. And you wouldn't have workers gathering as early as 5.30 a.m. to demonstrate. No, we gave 8 and we will move at 9. So by 8, we are sure we should have that number. So if cameras have been here at 5.30 and they captured no one, I was the only one here by then. But your flyer says you will start at 5 a.m., correct? There were so many flyers out there. The official one doesn't say 5 a.m., please. So how many people do you have there with you now? Oh, if I count, we should be just a little about 20. I thank you very much. We'll come back to you, Mr. Norbert Babochi, for uh, thank you for the information. Grateful that you could join us. Uh, Eduji, so, I, I so this. I, I was, uh, no, no, but I, I think that you are now stretching the conversation to explain to me. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with the democracy. Let me. Let me, let me okay. Say, that would be very unfair. Okay. You asked for a bit of a time you give me. Mm. Obviously, it's your time you give me. Mm. So, let me. Uh, Wrap up for me then. So my point has been that government has been fair with uh, workers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all understand the challenges that we have. And I, I think the difficulty people need to appreciate is that, particularly within the period of COVID, when we needed to do some level of shift system, mm -hmm. when some had to be in the house and others, and even sometimes we're not even going to work at all and all those things, the sort of productivity that government or we saw in every institution, as a private businessman, I mean, I was hugely affected because you cannot get the same revenues mm. if people come in and spend like three hours at work or two hours at work and some are in the house which you cannot really even uh, check okay. meet people but, but so whether, so i don't want us to spend all the time things, on this but matter. yet no revenues mm. of any public servant or any public worker was uh, a salary was either reduced or suspended or any sort any, any of these sorts. <laughs> government was consistent in terms of payment. Mm. And I think that when I was making those points about some of the things that government did in, in those moments, mm. and the sort of buffer government provided for families and, uh, and, and individuals, mm. my intention is to let people understand that for those top up measures and also policies given out by government, these hardship that people would want to talk about would have been compounded. Okay. But because of some of the innovative measures that have been Sorry, put I, think, I think that your point is very helpful. I don't want us to spend, very helpful spend all the time on, on this one because okay. we want to talk about 111 extensively. Uh, Council, so you had Mr. Bobochi. Um, he says that uh, the flyers we saw probably doesn't represent what they wanted, but no worker would gather at 5 a.m. or 5.30. They gave eight, they would move at nine. They are now a little above 20. He was the only one there as of that early when I went there. What do you say? Yes, uh, Johnny, good morning to your viewers. And I strongly believe that the right to demonstrate is not a right to demonstrate in numbers. It can even be one. What is critical is the message the person is sending. And in this case, workers of Ghana are saying that they do not understand why the president from 2017 to 2019 put up an emolument committee. That emolument committee had recommended payment of how much the president, his ministers, and Article 71 office holders should be paid. And they have been paid over 70% salary increases. But that's not really, please, uh, hold on. please, oh, calm down, calm down, calm down. Hold on, down, hold down, down, hold down, down for me. Allow, allow me to do my work, please. But it's calm not down. So, so allow me to the, do my the, work. The, the, the salary, it's not possible. Oh, but you are not the one supposed oh, to do my work that's for the Stop that, Sorry. calm down. Allow me the to salary, for you. The salary of President Akufuado 2017 to 2020 has increased by seventy over 70%. Per which record? No, per the, uh, the, the, yeah, uh, 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 
uh, the the committee, the emolument committee, mm. that recently came out with this report where payment should be made to first ladies among others. Go and look at the Government report. Government says that is false. Please, it is not. I am saying that the salary President John Dramani Mahama was receiving when he left office. Today, Akufado is taking almost twice that amount. Fact. You cannot run away from but, it. But but is that no, is no, that, no. You, is you, that as a hold on is that as a consequence of this latest emoluments committee yes. or what Professor Dora Dubuandos committee? No, agreed this is on? the ya uh, uh, Professor ya whatever mm. uh, uh, Baidu mm. committee report per the committee report. That's the record. So when workers of Ghana see that the employer is taking this amount of salary. And their salary has just been increased by only 4%. As agreed with their leaders. Please, so the it is not a committee. question of agreement. Their leaders agreed to what it. What I'm saying is that when you give them, because I knew that there was a back and forth, mm -hmm. and government insisted on the four, what can they do? We are not in normal times. It is not a question of we are not in normal times. It is the same period that the president's salary, minister's salary, has increased. So that's, that's a fact. So... And Let's so nobody, well, just for a minute, and so, right, and, and, right. and you see, these and are the critical issues. But just 30 seconds, I need to point this in proper perspective. But, but Rich, Richard keeps saying that what you're saying is not it correct. Is not true. Can Richard tell me the salary of President Akufado now? Can he tell can, me? Can I give you something? Do you know? No, can, can you I, tell you know? me? Oh, okay, so share. Simple so question. So share, share. Is it, uh, How much is the president's salary? Relax, please, relax, energy. Oh. So share the figures. Please, please. I'm, make, I'm allowing you to make this of intervention. Of course, because I'm giving, you, I'm giving you data. Right. I'm giving you data. In terms of the uh, uh, level of increment we've seen on Article 71. How much is the no, 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 no. Let's oh, mention the figure first. Why you? Why won't you allow me to communicate? If you have the answers, give it yourself. So allow me to communicate from the public sector, and I'll give you that of the public sector workers and that of the Article 71 office holders from 2017 to date. No, no, I agree. No, 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 no. How much is President Akufa do salary? Hold on, on, Richard, sorry. See, sorry, see. it is his time. He has asked a question because you are saying what he's saying is not I mean, correct. the person who is saying that he's taking twice, you do not ask him how much does President Mahama take? And how much is for the Kufa okay. taking now? So, so, and I'm, so telling, I'm giving so you data us, that so based us. on the information that is available. Okay. And this are information that can be checked everywhere. Absolutely. And I'm telling you, it is not possible mm. for anybody, any worker in Ghana, to have his uh, salaries increased by 70%. Within the period of you how many years? It's not question. possible. And I'm how telling much you, does the I'm president end in, now? You know, right course, now. Of course, of how course, much does the president some of those details, I'm, I might not be able to tell you. Uh, you see, you see, that is you don't really know. know. Yes, of course. But do you know? At the last time, hold on. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So, so if you don't have the answer, then allow him. President John Dramani Mahama. Richard, it is his time. Be fair to him. Be fair to him. You had your time. Don't give me the minute. Let me make a point on You give me a minute. Let me make a point on this. In terms of 2012, no, I'm, 20, not looking, 20, I'm not looking for those figures. I'm looking for figures how, how much is that for do salary If you don't have that, let him continue his the, the, That's the intervention the, 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 I wanted uh, uh, you to do. Uh, uh, okay, so move on. So so he he so doesn't have the answer now. Do you have the answer? In fact, how much does the president earn now? President you know? John Dramani Mahama was taking 27,000 whilst okay. living okay. today. President Akufado is taking 45. Who gave him that increment? Per the committee report. But the, but the comi and it has been accepted. But the committee report, you and I know that. And when, back pay. You and I know that when the emoluments committee sits to agree, it takes effect subsequently. It doesn't what? take effect immediately. No, correct? so no, it goes. This is, in fact, that is the interesting part with Article 71. It goes back. It goes back. And I'm surprised that my brother is not aware of this okay. fact. But I don't see, want us to spend all yes, the time I, on just this 30 one. Seconds. I, I, want I just, just wanted to, to one raise one something. One. Mm. You see, anytime this issue about worker salary coming, our friends quickly bring the issue of COVID. Please, let's stop this COVID, COVID blame. Look, within the same COVID period, we're told that government had exceeded its revenue targets. Government never said that because of COVID, they are relaxing taxes that they are taking from workers or Ghanaians. They never did. Government. Two, within the same COVID, let's also cut our expenditure according to our means. Are you saying nobody got any relief from government in terms of the workers, 50% insurance? I am telling, no, no, no. Else? I am telling you that government of Ghana exceeded mm. its revenue. Okay. You cannot be saying that because of COVID, you are unable to help workers or generally the economy is bad because of COVID, and you are telling me that at the same time you have exceeded your revenue targets. But it was rebased. 
Amen. Regardless, the government of Ghana has exceeded its revenue base. Maybe you will find out how much Predator Kufado takes okay. now. So the 4% of Ghanaian workers mm. is without justification. Okay. Something ought to be done about okay. it. Thank you. Let, let, I'll give you your time. I'll give you your time for 111 if you choose to use some for, for uh, this one because I, I want us to talk about 111. Yesterday, the president launched what is now being touted as, if you like, the most ambitious, the biggest uh, investment in our health infrastructure, 111. You own an hospital as well, so you can understand this better than uh, maybe both of us on this table. What is this supposed to achieve? I, I, Donny, I think I was trying to make a point, and I come to that. And how many minutes am I supposed I, I'm to? I'm giving you seven. Okay, so thanks. So, so we're starting minutes. at 27. You end at uh, so 28 because I mean it was already some minutes gone hey, before. Reach it. So it's let me let me deal with this. Let me deal with this matter. <laughs> Sec first and foremost, President Mahama was not taking 25,000. I didn't say 25,000. Uh, no, you, you, you said 25,000. President Mahama was it, taking yeah. <laughs> a little ab about 30,000. And yes. <laughs> no, 27. No, 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 it's not 27. No, not 27. It's not true. And they still within that uh, 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 30,000 range mm. for President Nana Danka Kufado. So that aspect about Mr. Nana Danka Kufado Sarah being Increased by 70%. It's never true. No, you no, can no. continue to no, lie to no, the people. No. You can do propaganda. Go you allow me my time. Allow, allow, allow me my time. You are not quoting. Allow, 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 allow my time. I've gotten the data for that. <laughs> <laughs> Which data document did you quote? The you just spoke okay, from okay, your own. Okay, so so now let me continue one, one, with the agenda 111. What is supposed to achieve? I think agenda 11162 provide parity in terms of health delivery across the length and breadth of this country. We realize that there are certain constituencies or districts or even regions, because of the creation of new uh, regions, that do not have uh, regional uh, hospitals or do not have hospitals. And this seeks to bridge the gap between some of these constituents or districts with that uh, health facilities. And I think one thing that we need to understand is that f for the life of any nation, mm -hmm. and I think perhaps this could be the most, the greatest ever investment in health delivery in any part of the world mm -hmm. where a government seeks to construct 111 health facilities and this is across every country that do not have one and i'm telling you that looking at this focus and what the president seeks to achieve with this it meant that this idea about people traveling from the forgotten part of the country where they do not have health facilities to city centers and other areas to assess health care. That will be the thing of the past. Where we need to struggle and move people for specialized services, mm. all these things will be a thing of the past. The, the, the most important thing is that we need to make sure that individuals and the con uh, companies that have been given the, the mandate to construct these facilities will work within the time frame and make sure that at least those who are also being given the other responsibility to stock the facility with equipment will go ahead and do the same. Because in all said and done, mm. what this stands to help the nation is that one, health delivery mm. will be top notch. Mm. This idea about the former president, I've heard him talk up north that it was a, 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 an afterthought. And I said to answer myself, what is happening with former president? And I do respect him a lot because he hasn't been easy becoming a president and, uh, uh, and, and, and losing an election mm -hmm. in the manner in which he lost in 2016 and coming back to 2020 and still losing beyond repairs. So some of the things that he says, you can understand the pain from which he speaks. But the point is that this is something that is captured by the MPP manifesto. So how can something that has been captured by a manifesto that's it to, that we campaigned on and for which Ghanaian voted for us to come into power and we are implementing and somebody saying that these things are an afterthought? How possible? Let's look at the funding for the project. Where are we sourcing the funding from? Apart from the GIF 100 million initial capital that we had, there are questions that have been raised about the fact that we may have difficulty trying to find the money. Do you agree? After difficulty, you will have raising money in a way, even as individuals, if you want to raise money, it will be difficult for you to raise. But it's not impossible. So long as there is commitment mm. in that regard. And government is committed in delivering on this. I remember back in opposition, when we spoke about providing free education, we were told all kinds of stories about impossibility and it not being feasible. Government cannot raise the revenues. Mm. So long as there's a will, there will always be a way to generate the revenues and re generate the re needed money to deal with it. In the same way that President Mahama was able to find some money to start the uh, e-blocks, for which he completed only 27, and the MPP have completed in excess of uh, 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 38. 
it tells you that because he believes in that policy, but the same person coming around to tell us, oh, this thing is an afterthought, the government did not have any focus, and we are doing it in a knee jerk reaction. No, no, no. It's a planned program. And it was first announced 2020, mm. and processes have been put in place, including acquisition of land. That is why the president indicated that we are starting, that was yesterday, we started with 88. 88 because about 13 or so of them, the land acquisition has no been finalized because of litigation here and there. Mm -hmm. And there are various assemblies and the traditional authorities are in talks and making sure that they iron out and also deal with the fine details and make sure whatever difficulties that confront the acquisition of those lands to help in this uh, project is dealt with. So we know that in a short, not short, uh, uh, long distant future, all these matters will be dealt with. I do believe that mm. what we need to do, not to follow the cynics, and the pessimists who think that nothing is impossible until they are in power. Everything is impossible. And nothing is possible for them to, for the country to achieve until they come into power. Those sort of thinking doesn't help the country. Mm. And I think that it is an audacious plan. We need to support the, the, the president. We need to support all the individuals who have been given the mandate mm -hmm. to work on this project. When same is completed, we will know the sort of face lifted to bring to our health infrastructure. Okay. Because we, we hear of people getting involved in an accident, they need to be rushed through sometimes uh, 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 30, 40 kilometers to go and assess healthcare. By the time you get there, you are possibly gone. The president has shown his desire to deal with the challenges within the health sector. Okay. We've seen ambulance for every constituency. Mm. The president believes in that. That is why he brought the one uh, constituency, one ambulance, or one district, one ambulance, where we have seen that across the country. Now we are also dealing with the issue of health infrastructure, and that is being dealt with. And this includes specialized uh, facilities. And I think that anybody who understands health okay. knows that uh, health is worth. So long as we're able to have a worthiness and a healthiness, mm -hmm. we'll have a better... The skeptics exist, perhaps, if you listen to the tone of His Royal Majesty 2482's uh, representative yesterday at the function. He had mentioned <clears throat> that people are being skeptical on social media, particularly, because Formina is outstanding, Afari is outstanding, Kumeu is outstanding. And so that perhaps raises doubts in some other hospitals, the military hospital in the Ashanti region and all of that. It raises doubts that you are able to achieve this because already you have not shown them the way that you can achieve this. A story of Quatrequa, if you will. What well, do you say? I, I, I think uh, it would be unfair. He was raising what he has seen on social media and they made reference to that oh he hear people talk about this right, talk about right. this but they believe that the president would do it and he so long as he has uh, is putting the money where his mouth is he'll be able to act on this and deliver that and i must tell you that some of the hospitals that people talk about are all part of this agenda 111 they are they are part of it when you look at the list i've looked at it mm. and i've cross-checked they are all part of it so they are all seeing that because you see i've heard people talk about the president announced this in 2020 so how come we are doing it a year after? Mm -hmm. And I said, that announcement, after the announcement, then there was a lot of work that needed to be done. Mm. That included the acquisition of land. That included uh, the designs, the documentation of all the various fine details. Mm. That needed to be done. And all these things have been done. Mm -hmm. So now we are ready for the full hope. And we are making sure that these are delivered. Okay. Because that is the way forward for the country. Mm. We cannot listen to the skeptics <coughs> all the time. We can listen to people who raise issues, genuine concerns. With their constructive criticism, we embrace them. But destructive criticism, the criticism that seeks to say that until I am in power, nothing good happens. Because we are seeing the president can, spoke can we, about. Can we not look at this from we and them situation? I'm where, not sure I'm looking at it. Where, where from the ordinary that Ghanaian this morning who will be lying on the floor at Kolebu or Konfanoche or Ifian Kwanta or any other polyclinic to be delivering their baby will be asking why they don't have a bed and why you are focusing on one 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 which in itself is a good project overall i think i think there's another thing i need mm. to tell you about uh, uh i think around 2020 uh, uh, november there about government took it upon itself to supply over a thousand beds being distributed for the various district hospitals mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so a good number of different <coughs> hospitals have been augmented with additional hospital beds government continues to provide additional facilities but the way the health infrastructure is because it has been overstretched 
So there ought to be constant investment in that. And I think this government has shown the way and continuously uh, invests in that. I know that a good chunk of the hospitals, all, practically all the hospitals outside a uh, reach that, uh, 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 that was done by the uh, SY uh, Mills and Mahama administration mm. and the University of uh, Ghana Hospital, which yeah. was commenced by President Mills administration. Mm. The rest of the hospitals that were completed were started by President Kufu under the Eurogate uh, jet pro project. And all these things tells you that incrementally, various governments come in and add on to whatever we have. But we are seeing a giant leap where government is making this audacious investment, mm. making sure that at least we deal with this issue once and for all. Because once, well, you see the, the focus of the president since we came in. Make sure that we industrialize the country. That is why you see the concept of one district, one factory being done across the length and breadth of the country. Mm. You are seeing making sure that we provide jobs for the people. We are seeing investment in education, telling you that we think that for the future generation, we need a more educated population who can okay. contribute I, I immensely think that to the you're national getting development. Into other in terms of health, mm. we are also making heavy investment in health. It tells you that we do believe that after all said and done, if all these individuals do not have access to quality health care, mm. if the pregnant woman cannot be guaranteed access to good health care, okay. and people will be transported in o o Okada and mm. all kinds of things, mm. that will not be the way forward. Great. So we are providing ambulance and building hospitals. Time is up. So that Great is a focus that men that understand what Thank you to, very much, to do with the issue Great that confronts Eduji, why are you skeptical? Uh, because this, on, 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 on the front of it, is, is a good initiative. 101, that's ambitious, but it is good. Imagine we have 101 hospitals up and running in addition to what is already there. Everybody will be happy. Nobody will travel. Richard won't travel outside to go and seek medical care. You won't. I won't. Johnny, in fact, there is fundamentally nothing wrong with a vision to provide better quality health care for our people. There's nothing wrong with it. What the good people of Ghana have demonstrated that skepticism about is the discredited promise from the discredited Akufuado. Explain. And I'll explain. Now, in 2016, the NPP India 2016 Manifesto under health promise, item one, that they were going to build district hospitals in districts without hospitals. Right. Now, from 2017, 2018, 2019, nothing happened. Then COVID came. Now, when COVID came, mm -hmm. Ghanaians now started raising issues. That means the president, we have a pandemic. We need health infrastructure. Because ultimately, mm -hmm. when people are sick and you use an ambulance to pick them, you're not going to provide permanent health care in an ambulance. Mm -hmm. You need to take the person to a health facility. Right. And that was lacking. And so if you notice, it was in the midst of COVID in one of the presidential addresses mm -hmm. that he brought this issue of Agenda 88. Right. Then we reminded him that in your 2016 manifesto, you had promised that with the benefit of power, you were going to do this immediately. You have not done it. You have not demonstrated any vision only for COVID to come. And now when COVID came, what hospitals were you relying on? Ghana East, you are relying on University of Ghana Medical Center, among other health institutions. Meanwhile, health infrastructure project commenced by the Mahama administration, you abandoned them. Formina, the Afari Hospital, and many, Bekwai, and many other hospital infrastructure projects, you abandoned it. Now, when COVID came, you are now coming to promise us that you are going to build 88. That was when the conversation of the 88, that was when it started. So it's important you put matters in perspective. Now, when the 88 agenda came, he said within a year, that was his intention to build the 88 hospital within a year right. in the midst of COVID. Then today, it's over a year since the president made that promise. And nothing has but, happened. But the president's, uh, the, the information minister explained that that was phase one. 
where we were doing consultations, a land acquisition, see, there see. were issues with the it. President, so now, see, by the see, end of that with, year, with, it's with, been with, done. Now see, we're see, zooming see, into see. the second with, part, with, which with, is with activation. The, with, with the greatest respect. Mm -hmm. When the president spoke, with the greatest respect, there was, water, there was no water in his mouth. The president was very clear. He said his intention is to build 88 hospitals. Right. Now, when they were unable to do it, they brought it into their 2020 manifesto and now enhance it from 2088 to 111. Now, Johnny, if you recall, the president went to Shama and cut short for 100 bed hospital at 35 million euros. That's about 41 million dollars. Right. When he cut that short last year, it's been a year now, the ground is fallow. There is nothing going on. La, just la. After this show, you can take your cameraman to La. I know Hospital. what's happening at La. Fantastic. Now it's a breeding place for snakes. But, nothing but, is but going on. says that project has not been abandoned. It's still in the works. Yes, with the floor, with the ground, with glasses, uh, uh, you know, grasses all over the place. I agree. That's not an abandoned project. They have not even commenced it. That aside, Koforibia, he went there, castled a similar project. Nothing is going on. So what Ghanaians are saying is that, Mr. President, your own conduct of cutting sword and after the year, there is nothing ongoing. That is the sentiment the representative of Nana Santini yesterday expressed right in front of the president. Now, you see, Johnny, if you want to see the commitment of this government, whether or not they can deliver the 1111 hospitals, it's a simple thing. The president claimed that a, a, a hospital is going to cost, that is $60 million, right? right? 70 million rounded up. Absolutely. <laughs> now, if you do 111 times that number, mm. it gives you $1.68 billion right. to roll out that program, right. correct? Right. Now, he says you do that within 18 months, correct? Mm. Now, if you are doing $1.68 billion for 111, over three budget cycles. Oh, so. please. Yes, that's correct. That was that's correct. So, that's correct. Uh, please. Please. So, I, I'm, I'm listening to him. Mm. Uh, 18 uh, months. Mm. But, now, three, that, but there are three budget cycles, to be fair. No, and no, the 100 no, million see, is just a startup capital. Now, so I'm coming there. Right. As we speak, the president says that the initial $100 million, they are taking it from the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. Correct. Mm. You would recall that in 2014, when President John Dramani Mahama decided mm -hmm. to set up the Ghana Infrastructure Fund, the MPP minority in parliament raised the issue that why should you use 2.5% value added tax for the Ghana Infrastructure Fund instead of pumping it into NHIS? In fact, their ranking member on health, Dr. Richard Anani or so, raised that issue, and the record is there. Having said that, today, that's, that's oh, funny. please, that's please, funny. please. <laughs> today, mm -hmm. this government is relying on proceeds from the Ghana Infrastructure Fund mm. for the purposes of rolling out this thing. It tells you between the two leaders who is a but visionary. But it is our leader. money, regardless. Why? <laughs> and, uh, uh, free SHS. Is he Akufado's pocket money or his salary? What, 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 what retort is that? But I, it is our money. Why do you want to claim that? Why? But <laughs> when, when, when <laughs> free SHS is using his somebody's pocket, somebody's he's money. using his pocket money to do it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. right? Why are you claiming it's, that? It's, it's it's okay. But you see, Johnny, mm -hmm. the point I'm making is that if you have not demonstrated mm -hmm. any source of funding okay. beyond the hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm then we are in for trouble. So Richie says, for example, and he is the spokesperson on infrastructure, says that, look, even in our private lives, it is not easy to raise money. But whenever you have a will, there's a way. If you have a target, you achieve it. Number two, this is a seed fund. And yesterday, Kojo Pankrumah says, let us all take an interest in Agenda 111 and support it to the best of our ability and get it done. Because once it's see, done, see, everybody John, will no, smile. John, you see, Johnny, if if today, isn't a good call. No, Johnny, if today, it, please. please if two, today, two more than we'll wrap up. President Akufado mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. to say mm -hmm. that, okay, Mr. Akufado comes to say that, Ghanaians, give me 100 Ghana city, Momo, to build hospitals. I'll gladly do it. But this president, who even promised God to build him a cathedral, 
is now coming back to us to give him 100 Ghana cities to build a cathedral he promised God. Voluntarily. Nobody is forcing So I am is saying that. So I am no, saying that. No, but that is his personal life. vow. But nobody so why is, can't he do it personally? I, mean, I am not saying that. That is why I said if. You don't if, believe in it. That is why I'm right. saying that yeah. if. For you. If. I oh, the church I attend, the life. pastor and the church members have been able to put up a building. Mm. I don't need to go to any other place. But the point I'm making is that, Johnny, if you have a situation where the president's priority mm -hmm. is a cathedral, for which mm -hmm. reason he is asking Ghanaian voluntarily to give 100 Ghana cities by way of donation, I am thinking that if he means war, mm -hmm. let him come back to the good people of this country and say, look, give me 100 Ghana cities to enable me build the health infrastructure project that will ultimately benefit us. Johnny, before I leave. The cathedral won't benefit us. Cathedral? Yes. Where do you fellowship? I'm an Anglican. Don't you have a church building? We need a national cathedral. That's what the president says. Action Chapel, Duncan Williams, has he not been able to build? See, see Pastor Doug, Pastor Doug, you were Mills. Has he, uh, has he not? Don't so, have so, our, yeah. our Christians, building, so our Christians, so our Christians, our Christians, no, our Christians <laughs> lacking. Our Please, our Christians <laughs> lacking a place of worship you see how in terms of priority. Place of worship. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. but you see, 30 seconds. Okay. 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 Richard, Allah, Allah, Allah. I want us to have it one at a time. What that I'm saying is that this president mm. lacks credibility really? when it comes to rolling out infrastructure projects. Have seen he it. does they not have a, okay. Okay. thank you. Please. Thank Tetis, you very no, much. no, no, but you see, Johnny, you allow him to interact with me. I ask uh, you I, I'm, I'm sorry, Richard, please. He R is the government spokesperson no, no, of infrastructure. Don't, don't do that. No, he that on this platform in, okay, okay, indicated okay. Oh, that, that, indicated that no. sorry. the sorry Muhammad that administration that only built 26 day schools. Right. That's not correct. You do, you Even you your own friend. minister you of education, Apo, indicated that by the time he came, 41 of those schools have been built. No, no, that's not true. I saw that's something. the record. No, that's not true. You completed as, 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 so as a spokesperson of infrastructure. You need to address yourself. I'm saying that you completed yourself. 27. You 41 could, uh, from money. your own minister. If you had money, you say you're building 200. You your claim own that you have the foresight. And there were you others see at the tomorrow stages okay. of completion. You can see tomorrow from you know. Thank you. That money, <laughs> thank you. you, you thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's take a look at this video you quickly. Agenda now, one, one. This is what President Akufuado said in January 2017. And I like his style because uh, since forever, since Ghana began, we have never had a president who would say, I'm appointed Richard Asante Eboa, these are his credentials, this is what I want him to do. Honorable Kweku Ajimamenu is still our Minister for Health. He was appointed in 2017, he has done one term. Yesterday I saw him there, even though he was on leave, and I think that he likes his job. Now, this was the mandate given to the Health Minister in January 2017. I don't think it has changed. Take a look. Very articulate, <coughs> very insightful, done a very good job recently as Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament. He's a well-known economist and an accountant by training. I believe that <coughs> For us to have a successful health delivery system, we need to come to grips once and for all with finding a sustainable financial base for the operation of our national health insurance scheme. <coughs> the technical issues involved in what kind of health delivery should be provided, that, that argument is there, but if at the, at, at the base we don't find that sustainable financial platform for the operation of the National Health Insurance Scheme, it will continue to suffer the difficulties that it has over these last years. A long standing arrears of, of settling bills for health providers, for being able to pay health workers on time sufficiently. The issue of the restoration of uh, 
training allowances for our trainee nurses. All of these have been essentially financial issues. So I believe that if we can have a, a person there who has a very good eye as how to balance the books and how to make the necessary investments that will make our health system viable and therefore be able to build on this extraordinary social legacy that Jay Kufour gave the country in the National Health Insurance Scheme. For me, it's an extremely important part of the agenda that we have. So I've chosen to leave the health sector. I was not a doctor, but who I believe has sufficient understanding of the issues to be able to be comfortable with the medical profession. Man of very great respect, tolerance. He's not somebody who will walk into a room and say, My view is the only view that matters. He will listen. But when he makes up his mind that this is the way to go, he's extremely firm about it. And I think this is exactly the right kind of material to be a minister. So, Kwaku Ajiman Menu, the member of parliament of the last century, is a man that I'm recommending to the all right, so that's the president, uh, Nana Dudakwe Kufado, on uh, sometime early January 2017, naming his health minister. And at the base of that, he said, we're looking for financial sustainability, how to raise money to support a viable health system. Richard, so now the question is, go, we're talking about funding for Agenda 111 and all of that. Is it your view that this... Uh, financial sustainability which will create this viability and he says the president says it will help to support whatever infrastructure that's put in place is it your view that we are on course because now we are talking where to look for money to fix this agenda one 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 i think when president spoke about the sustainability i mean from that clip mm. you just shown the focus was on the national health insurance that's scheme. right but you know he equally roped in health infrastructure mm. I saw that we needed to deal with that because you see that's why sometimes I get worried with the kind of politics we do in this country mm -hmm. because what it is is that we as political actors know that there are various issues that confront our health sector the health uh, uh, the national health insurance scheme mm -hmm. as a scheme ought to be sustainable where when you are a card bearer you can go to any health facility that have been accredited by the scheme and they would receive you with joy and provide with health services. Right. They, that can only happen when the people, after providing service to the individuals and they send their bills to the scheme, they are promptly paid. If it delays, it means that they will be challenged in terms of accepting that. And then people will f f find a way of extorting money, or taking money from this card bearer because the hospital needed to run. Mm. So President spoke about the fact that we need to find a proper means of dealing with this situation right and i think that to, to raise, raise money the, the, to yeah. raise money i think that we've seen a better system being run it is still not up to what we all look for but in terms of what they do now it is far better than what we've seen previously in terms of the number of months mm. that they, you'll be owed something close to a year and all mm. that now you're seeing three months six months here and there you could come down to a, a month mm. it all need to be how to find a proper means of dealing with that. Now, the issue of health infrastructure... Is, is it, is it your you, view that, you for know, example, if we, had, if we had run the NHIS well, like the president had envisioned while putting Mr. Jimamenu there, who he, he himself admits that he's not a doctor, but is a finance or accounts person, if we had dealt with it properly, we won't be talking about where to look for money to do Agenda 111. I mean, no matter what you say, no, every project or program that you would want to implement as a state you need to contemplate where you get revenues from, money from, to deal with that. But you see, we have a mirage of issues in the kitty, mm -hmm. and each of them are begging for solution. So long, so long as those confront you, you need to deal with them. You have education. Now you are talking about salaries. We are here talking about salaries of mm -hmm. staff mm -hmm. that you want it to be increased. We are talking about providing road infrastructure. We are seeing road being done. We are talking about educational infrastructure. There are moments that you even communicate privately about schools that you think they have issues that need to be dealt with. All these issues will be begging for attention. And government needs to deal with them as and when they come. Also on them, we know that there are systemic issues or problems. And those systemic 
challenges or failures that we have in the system, we ought to deal with them with the pragmatic steps. So, so long as but, all but that's these why are the put the minister that, there, that, means that because he believed that the minister could mean, get that done. That, see, mm. I can tell you, when you are running a government, you run it like as you look at yourself as an individual. No matter the salary you take as a person, there are issues and things within your life that you need to stress extra, mm. or sometimes do other. I mean, galamsey here, and they're not the no, normal galamsey. <laughs> but I'm talking Moon, about moonlighting, of course, moonlighting to, to be able to pa, pa, pa. raise, yes, okay. very good, raise mm. additional funding Before to support somebody comes your life. To hold your neck. So, in <laughs> that regard, it tells you that in the government setup, every year you are looking at this amount of revenue that needs to be raised. Within the COVID period, government lost total of 11 billion CDs in terms of revenue that government could not get. But you said you achieved your target. When you talk about achieving our target, because of the projection we did in <laughs> before COVID, government knew that indeed what is going on meant that we will not be able to meet that. So we need to revise it. Right. So the, re the, revi the revised version, government was able to achieve it. But it still meant that the original plan, we lost 11 billion. Nothing changed, but we spent more. The extra sp expenditures we saw was that before COVID, nobody's child was being given no smarts. Veronica Bucket schools were not being provided with. They were not being provided with all the uh, temperature monitoring and all the things that we saw the government needed to fight it. Okay. So in every step of the way, mm. we realized that there will be events that will require additional money that need to be generated. And that is you, you can look at from your own life, that there are things that you have not budgeted for. You are things that you are not anticipating. But to come in, when it comes in, it is extremely important that you need to deal with it. It's like you wake up, you know you have an iron, and okay. the iron is broken the next morning. Okay. Have you planned for iron, presentation of iron okay. within that? Let, let's read so this let's is see a few messages. I'll come to come Godwin. To, been mm. But you see, what I want to round up by saying is mm. that, as a country, there are a lot of good things and positives in this country. We cannot allow politics mm. to blind us and we continuously see even negatives in the midst of the positives that are happening. Mm. We cannot undermine and criticize and be so cynical about everything that is being done by government. I tell you, if you ask my brother, if you should tell 20 things, positive things that MPP has done, he would get nothing to say. What? He will not say anything. Because you know why? Are you because, sure? Of course, he will not say anything. He will tell you things that are negative. Some of them are not even negative, but because of propaganda and the mischief, mm. he will try and marry negativity into it. What you need to understand is that those things do not help the nation. But, but because you see, do it to yourself. All the things that they say, but all the negative do it things that they say, mm. the people went to the election 2020. They looked at all the things you've been saying okay. and said, you know what? We trusted you with four years. Mm. And based on what you have achieved, the success stories, we are giving additional money for four years. Okay. Go out there and achieve more. Okay. And the president is building hospitals, building factories, and we are seeing the sort of infrastructure. The economy is booming. The economy is growing. Because, you see, when we came in, the kind of things that we saw, mm. we saw uh, inflation at 15 uh, there about percent now what is inflation seven seven eight percent if, now, if now, people don't have their now we saw we saw money in their pockets if people don't have money in their pockets can they spend we saw thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you it's okay right it's not 10 minutes now not that we're talking about four but now we see please i beg you 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 Man, welcome. Not negative stories. Okay, welcome. <laughs> Let's uh, read a few a few messages <laughs> and then we will come uh, uh, to a bad <laughs> 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 Agenda 111 is a good policy, but our maintenance is poor. Look at other hospitals and clinics that we already have. We have bed issues. Some people are sleeping on the floor. So let's check our schedule on maintenance. Uh, my name is George Osei Enchi from Bogoso. I have a problem with the Agenda 111 new hospitals to be constructed. Why doesn't the government rather complete, why, why won't the government rather complete those that are left to rot and rather construct new ones? Civil society must rise or else we are paying taxes for COVID-19. Dr. Ekum from Boko sent in that one. 
This one says, I'm surprised the president says until the upsurge of COVID-19, the government of Ghana wasn't aware that several districts and communities in the country did not have hospitals. God help us. KJ from Kofodia sent in that one. Good morning, Johnny, and to your cherished viewers. It will interest you to note that even where the sword will be cut, there, will be, there won't be a single completed hospital built in that area. Triddle sent this yesterday as well. The Agenda 111 is probably the most audacious project ever to be conceived. This shows a visionary leader who has Ghana at heart. We should all roll up our sleeves and support this initiative. Well done to the president. Kofi Ajiman on the Spintex Road sent in that one. Good morning to you, TV3. Please, when Eduji was talking about the president's salary increase, Richard said it was not true. Now they asked Richard to bring the truth and he said he cannot tell. Please and please, Johnny, some of us, your listeners, are paying critical attention to factual presentation and honesty from your platform. Efo Koku from Akachi sent in that one. Good morning, Team Three. Richard, Richard keeps oh, distracting the program nine. unnecessarily. We are listening and I mean, he should guys, respect worry, us. Efo Koku worry, again worry. with <laughs> that one. <laughs> Walanyo in Akutia <laughs> says, I grief public sector <laughs> workers are demonstrating <laughs> because of the salary increment. So, so do they think <laughs> by demonstrating their <laughs> demands will be met automatically i can't think far agenda 111 has come to stay let us embrace it to the fulfillment by faith and hope doubting thomas's will see it live and colored happy so birthday so to you Iliasu in tamale good morning johnny what happened to the sword cutting uh, sword cuttings president Nanado did in 2020 was that for the cameras Ghanaians are no more interested in what the government does and that is a bad precedent kofi from tema sent in that one Eja Adam Enyam Meim says, they said Ekufado would never be president. He became president. You said free education was a pipe dream. He has implemented it with style. You think he can't build 111 hospitals? Dream, dream on. on. Well, we're awake. And uh, uh, Ambassador Sampiali says, Johnny, some time ago the president announced that he and his vice president were paying a percentage of their salaries Let for the public good. May I know how much they have accrued? Uh, Richard, if this the free if uh, the free high school without textbooks and good accommodation etc is what your government promised then please take it back then things are possibly only if the people trust in the process of the government richard did you say the ambulances were truly ordered by the mpp government uh, Johnny, kindly show him the picture of the uh, Kolibu Surgical Ward, where I don't have the picture here. And it says, uh, the, the hospi hospitals are built with money, not with the will of the people. Uh, I need to quickly make this intervention. The Ntiamwa report regarding the emoluments. So the president uh, presently takes 29,899. In 2017, that I'm reading what it reads here. Uh -huh. In 2017, president took 35,520. In 2018, it's 39,072. In 2019, it is 42,979. And in 2020, it is 47,277. Points awarded is 120. Vice President had 29,600 in 2017, 35,560 in 2018, 35,860 in 2019, and 39,397 in 2020. That's also 100 points. Now, a cabinet minister of the last time we checked, cabinet minister who is MP, uh, earns 33,270. A cabinet minister who is not an MP earns 32,832. A minister of state who is an MP earns 30,664. A minister of state who is a non-MP earns 30,206. A regional minister who is an MP earns 30,644 per month. A regional minister who is a non-MP earns 29,768. A deputy minister who is an MP earns 29,768. A deputy minister who is an MP earns um, 28,760. It goes on and on. I could give you the list, but this is what it is now. So presently, the president of the Republic, Pedro Committee, and 47,277. So that's the detail there. Independently verified. So, 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 so,
and use that to support the health infrastructure and other things to make a viable health system. That was the president's vision, and he gave that mandate to Honorable Kukwajima Menu to go and achieve that for him. Even if he acknowledges the man is not a doctor. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. Now, Agenda 111 is here. We are looking for where to find money. Is it your view that if we had followed the president's vision as he had it then, we wouldn't be here talking about where to find money to achieve such a lot you of life? You see, John, <clears throat> there was never a vision in the first place. How do you say that? What we had was slogans. And our president believes that he can hoodwink Ghanaians with the benefit of sloganeering. Mm -hmm. Nothing more, nothing else. Look, Johnny, mm -hmm. and I found it extremely discomforting that yesterday, the president in the company of the health minister never took the opportunity mm -hmm. to even rebuke him publicly, okay, for mm -hmm. undermining and violating the procurement law the Constitution, 1992. Do you know who administered the oath of office and gave him his mandate, the Minister of Health? It was the President. But the matter is before Parliament. No, please, I think that please, please. The no, to die and it, uh, no, Parliament. no. Johnny, this is a committee of Parliament. The report is already out, and I have it here. It's dated but, August 26. But, but they have not taken a decision. No, but the point I'm making. But they have not taken a decision. Oh, and how Johnny. is that? How is that connected to? Relax, relax. Business. How is that connected to raising funds to achieve a sustainable and viable health system? How? Johnny, a man who can decide to violate the laws of this country, and the president gives him a thumbs up. That is Ghanaians who are rather worrying the minister in his one or half at all. You I read it. The point I'm making is that look, when, uh, when a minister <laughs> misconducts himself in this manner, the president, who is the appointing authority, must demonstrate demonstrate that one, he does not support I, that. I'm, I'm looking for the relevance. And, no, no, no. I'm, 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 no the, I'm the coming the here. The reason why I'm dovetailing this one mm. is that. You see, this is a president who had decided to take everything for granted. He doesn't care. If he did, at least he would have demonstrated enough commitment relative to some of these projects. The Agenda 111 is supposed to be an initiative of the president, correct? Look, even the Bible says, even the Bible says, even the Bible says, before you put up anything, at least you look at the cost, benefit, and everything right. before you come out. Right. The president by now should know that you don't need 100 million Ghana cities to build 111 hospitals. But there will be you three budget cycles. No, you, you see, that Johnny, will be provided, Johnny, uh, Johnny, uh, Richard, allow me, please. With last year, expense, no, so last year when the president cast out for over six hospital projects, why well, he didn't know that we we're going to have budget uh, cycles, hmm. he has no plans. Hmm. He's just doing everything in an ad hoc Manner. Okay. See, I would thank wish you. that tomorrow see, see, we you. have hospitals it, 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 it is like Ghana. Uh, thank you. We'll have, so why wouldn't uh, you uh, get uh, a uh, deputy national communications director of the NPP and also lawyer Godwin Eduji Tamaklo is a member of the NDC's legal and communications team.